everybody. Today we're going over the conversion kit for your Glock 21, converting it over to 460 rolling. This one here, as you can see, is clearly marked on there. What we're going to do is we're going to put a few rounds on steel here, keep uh, shooting it, let you know what I think of it, talk about the ballistics of the round itself, and what the performance of the actual um, caliber change kit has been. But without further ado, let's start shooting. I realize for many of you watching this video, this may be the first time you've ever actually heard of the caliber of 460 Rowland, so a quick overview on what the caliber is. Um, it was designed by Mr. Rowland to mimic the 44 Magnum cartridge that you see out in revolvers, and it can be fired out of semi-automatic handguns, which you see here in the Glock 21. Um, most of what you're going to see out there are going to be conversions like what you see here in the Glock pistols, XD pistols, and 1911s. Those are the most popular, but there are factory guns chambered in 460 Rowland. Uh, most notably, the Wilson Combat Hunter, of course, made famous by Ted Nugent. Um, so they are out there. I believe there are actually revolvers chambered in this as well. Um, the difference between the 460 Rowland and the 45, well, there's quite a few, obviously. We'll get into those. But as you see here from this picture, the case on the 460 Rowland is about 1 16th uh, of an inch longer. And both of these rounds that you're looking at are 230 grain uh, bullets. And the reason the case is a little bit longer is to prevent it from being chambered in your standard uh, 45 ACP chambered gun. Obviously, the pressure differences are a good bit different, and you'd likely have a, a kaboom, as they call it. Um, just an example, the 45 uh, plus P is about 23,000 23, PSI, whereas the 460 Roland is 40,000 PSI. So there's a big difference in chamber pressure, and that's why the case is longer to prevent it. But what we're gonna do now is just kind of show you the power that this round is capable of. I have a few rounds that you're gonna see annotated during this chronograph test. We shot two rounds of each, um, and you'll see just the numbers on this round are extremely, extremely impressive. Recoil is pretty stout. There's no getting around it. Even in a Glock frame, which is a very soft shooting gun, the frame flexes, as we all know, to help absorb that recoil. It's also nice and wide, and uh, that helps distribute the recoil across a wider section of your hand. The brakes on there, again, reducing recoil. But even with all that, guys, it still feels maybe even a little bit hotter than a Glock 20 with, with you know, like Underwood ammo, for example. Um, so there's definitely a recoil impulse there. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you're a novice shooter, if you're new to shooting, and you just want a hand cannon, by all means do it. But one thing that can lead to, for those of you guys that are less experienced, is perhaps developing some bad habits trying to anticipate that recoil. Either way, guys, with the recoil, just a note on that, the recoil is going to get you one way or another, so you might as well make the shot and not have to shoot twice if you miss. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of how I look at it. But anyway, um, yeah, so with the recoil, make sure you, you know what you're getting into. It's, it's, I mean, it's not horrible. I'm obviously out here shooting it today. But... It's just something you want to take note of, you know, like you probably don't want to bring your wife out for her first time shooting with this gun. I'd probably go for a Glock 17 there or something along those lines, but eventually, sure, absolutely, anybody can shoot it. It's not like painful or anything, but the impulse is certainly stronger than what you'd be used to with a more uh, standard mainstream cartridge, if you will. The basic conversion kit consists of a barrel made out of 416R st stainless steel, by the way, uh, your upgraded increased strength recoil spring, and your brake. So to install it is extremely simple. It couldn't be more simple. You're going to drop your mag. One note on the kit, the basic kit does not include an upgraded mag spring. That said, I've ran this with five different clock mags, just over 500 rounds of the 460 so far. Had one malfunction. The only malfunction was with a mag that didn't have an upgraded mag spring. So they do recommend you use one. It's like eight bucks over on their site. I recommend you use one if you're going to use it for serious use. But I mean, it's pretty reliable without it. But if you want it to be very reliable, it's worth eight bucks in my opinion. So you're just going to take your gun down as you normally would any Glock. 
Remove your factory spring and barrel. And we're gonna put our barrel in. Put the muzzle brake on. Now, when you're actually doing this for real, not just on a YouTube video like I'm doing it here to show you guys, they provide uh, Loctite. So you, they want you to Loctite it down to make sure it's not gonna move around on you. You wanna wait 24 hours. So that'll cure before you actually go out and shoot it. And you're gonna center it up, line it all up. Put your spring in, your heavier spring in, and reassemble the pistol, if I can do it. And that's it. That's the conversion process. It really is that simple. Now the kit itself comes to market right around $325 over on 460relon.com, so it's not terribly expensive. And if you're a hand loader, the ammunition's not bad at all. If you're not, Generally speaking, it's going to be somewhere in the range of what you pay for 10 millimeter out there, maybe a little bit more. And there's a lot of places that do carry it, uh, Underwood, Buffalo Boar, as well as over at 460Rowan.com as well. Um, but it's all kinds of fun, all kinds of power, and in all seriousness, uh, if you wanted to use it as a defensive cartridge, particularly those guys who like to hunt with it or use it as a woods gun or certainly home defense, why not? We'll have some uh, gel tests coming up in the future with this gun and some of this ammo, but... It's definitely a powerful round. You're getting a lot of power out of a semi-auto and uh, seems to function well. It shoots well. If you guys have any questions about this conversion kit or anything else I talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comment section. You can also post over my Facebook page. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video.